We're here at the 10th workshop on adverse drug reactions and lipodystrophy, just having concluded, and we're here with uh, Todd Cade, who is with the University, uh, George Washington, or Washington yeah. University in St. Louis, and uh, your presentation was on uh, the issue of how the, how the, the heart deals with, uh, with fatty acid and glucose, and right. differently from met metabolic syndrome right. as those who don't have metabolic right. syndrome. Can you give us, first of all, tell us a little bit about metabolic syndrome and then? Sure. So uh, as you know, um, people with HIV taking medications, about half of them experience uh, a wide variety of metabolic complications. One of them is insulin resistance or prediabetes. Another one is blood lipids that are high, like uh, increased triglycerides, uh, good cholesterol that are low, um, increased blood pressure, and then this um, fat redistribution syndrome. And it's very similar to non-HIV infected people um, that have this metabolic syndrome. And basically how the metabolic syndrome is defined in non-HIV infected people is having three of five criteria. One is insulin resistance, another one's high triglycerides, uh, low, low good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, elevated trunk of fat, so basically a waist circumference that are, that's over basically 100 centimeters in men and 88 in women, and then, uh, then presence of uh, elevated blood pressure, which is 130 over 85. That's how they defined it. Mm -hmm. So what we did was um, we know that the metabolic complications look a little bit different than in people with HIV. Usually they're not obese, but they do have elevated trunk fat but then with this lipoatrophy and then mm -hmm. and trunk, increased trunk fat. So what we wanted to do is looking at, we want to compare how um, their heart metabolizes fat and sugar in people with the metabolic syndrome who have HIV and then people who have HIV that, that do not have the metabolic syndrome. So what we found is the people with the metabolic syndrome seem to have not only whole body insulin resistance, but also heart insulin resistance, basically saying that the heart's not able to use sugar like it should, and also it's not able to use fat like it should. So basically a kind of a down regulation in both how the heart metabolizes fat and sugar. And this has been shown in other populations to be an indicator of, um, of, of a pre-failing heart. So we're thinking potentially um, these people who, who have this, these issues with the heart, they have a low level, we call it left ventricular dysfunction, which is a f fancy name for the heart doesn't contract and relax as well. N not overt heart failure or anything like that, but just low level subclinical problems with contraction and relaxation. We believe that potentially these, these metabolic problems in the heart predispose someone who had to having these uh, uh, problems with contraction. And, and it may be uh, over time, chronic problems with metabolism may lead to heart failure down the line. And that's why we think it's important. Right, and, and the work that you're doing is not defined very completely clearly. It's not, not ready for Correct. general practice. but. The indicators are such that it is definitely warranting more work, more study. Absolutely. And will the, how will you be doing some of that, or will you? Mm. So this is the first. This is actually the first studies that has been looking at myocardial metabolism in people with HIV. There's, it's, it's a fairly new field in general. Probably mm -hmm. only the last ten years or so, mm -hmm. looking at diabetics and, and, and people with heart failure and things like that. So this is really the first study that, that's showing there is a difference. And what we're doing mm -hmm. in the people with the metabolic complications, we're actually randomizing them, uh, putting half of them into taking a, a drug called pioglitazone, which is basically mm -hmm. a, a diabetic drug, a whole body insulin sensitizer. And then mm -hmm. the other half are randomized into exercise training. And we want to see if we can, can we improve myocardial metabolism and thus heart function. So it's through a challenge process. Mm -hmm. and so so basically an intervention. Mm -hmm. And so, so there is an answer to this. If, if we can confirm this, this would be really a good thing to know because we, we have a way to deal with it. So uh, what is the time parameter on this? Another couple of years? Or Hopefully another yeah. couple of years. We actually have, a, we're ongoing right now, this trial. And we have, um, I actually presented a poster in, in the pioglitazone. We have eight, in its preliminary results, but we have eight mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, seemed like the pioglitazone isn't doing much, but we only have a couple in the exercise arm, and, and I didn't present that here, but it seemed like exercise was more effective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that. But um, it's very, we think it's very important because there's a lot of press on the elevated MI risk in people mm -hmm. with HIV. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of press on this le uh, left ventricular dysfunction in people, yeah. and I think that really needs to be. You're really making some more definition yeah. to the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to do this short interview, and, and it's been very helpful. I think it's helpful to the people to know that this is in research, mm -hmm. that this is a, 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 in the process of learning what we need to know to answer the question. Exactly. And I thank you very much for well, doing thank that. Thank you to very us. much. Thank you.